remember in what follows, only a spin that is in an eigenstate can be said to have a definite value for any non-zero duration of time. Spin components that are in superposition states are in one orientation for some fraction f of each infinitesimal subinterval of time delta t, and in the opposite orientation for the remainder, 1 minus f of each subinterval of delta t. In other words, a spin component along some particular direction can be said to be in an eigenstate only if it has a fixed value 100% of the time along that direction. Let's take a point that has no spin and express it as the sum of two opposite spins along some direction m. Then separate these two spin vectors, sending one to Alice and one to Bob. If the direction m is at an angle theta to the y direction, then in terms of the y direction, the spin along m has a spin ratio of up to down along y of, up along y, cos squared theta over 2 of the time, to down along y, sine squared theta over 2 of the time. As explained in the video, quantum spin and chirotemporal correlation. This ratio exists in each subinterval delta t of the time. It is important to remember this point that the ratio exists during each infinitesimal subinterval of time and is not merely an overall ratio. With respect to any direction, m, Alice's particles spin along direction m will be the opposite of Bob's spin along direction m. If Bob's particle is plus along m, then Bob's particle will be plus along y, cos squared theta over 2 of the time, and minus along y, sine squared theta over 2 of the time. And Alice's particle will be minus along y cos squared theta over 2 of the time and plus along y, sine squared theta over 2 of the time. And since the total spin is zero, Alice's spin will be minus along y during the same time interval that Bob's is plus along y, and plus along y during the same time interval that Bob's is minus along y. If either Alice or Bob make a measurement in the y direction, then with respect to that, y direction it is, and more importantly, always has been, the spin in the m direction that is in superposition. Since these are the same thing just viewed from different directions in space. If you're still not clear about this, see the other video, quantum spin and chirotemporal correlation which should be viewed before this one. In other words, it will not matter what direction m was when the entangled pairs were created. Measurement along say, y, or indeed along any direction theta, will always result in Bob and Alice having opposite spin eigenstates along the direction of measurement. So understanding instantaneous spin correlations between arbitrarily distant entangled pairs is relatively simple via chirotemporal correlation. What is perhaps more interesting is seeing how the chirotemporal correlation remains the case even after the entanglement is broken. In order to see this, it is necessary to get a few details in order first. Firstly, note that if you are alternately right side up and upside down, relative to everything else, it is the same as your remaining right side up and everything else being alternately right side up and upside down. In this context up and down have no absolute meaning, there is only aligned and anti-aligned. Secondly, in order to keep track of the chirality properly, we can adopt the following convention. Unless otherwise stated, all vectors point in directions parallel to the screen or page and face either inward or outward normal to the screen or page. Suppose a y measurement has just been made and the two particles consequently have opposite spins along the y direction. Suppose Bob now makes a second measurement, this time along the x direction. This will have no effect on Alice since the particles are no longer entangled. If Bob gets plus along x, Alice will not necessarily get minus along x if she measures the x component of her particle's spin. Because she is in a y eigenstate, Alice, were she to measure along x, would simply get plus along x 50% of the time and minus along x 50% of the time. Independently of Bob. The entanglement is said to have been broken by the first measurement along y. But to see how this has no effect on the chirotemporal correlation. After the x measurement by Bob. Column 1, Alice's particle is in a y eigenstate. Column 3, Bob's particle is in an x eigenstate. Columns 1 and 3 clearly show that Alice's and Bob's particles are not entangled. But notice column 2. Column 2 is Alice's state as analyzed from the point of view of the x eigenstate of Bob's particle. Columns 1 and 3 describe the post-x measurement situation according to Alice and Bob. Columns 2 and 3 describe the post-x measurement situation according to their particle spins. Columns 1 and 2 have identical outcomes for Alice. Like column 1, Column 2 says that Alice would get down along her y 
were she to re-measure her particle's spin in the y direction, and that she would get x only 50% of the time, were she to measure in the x direction. According to column 2, this is because she herself is upside down 50% of the time. Notice that whenever Bob's particle is chirally left-handed, Alice's is chirally right-handed, and vice versa. Taken together, columns 1, 2, and 3 show how chirotemporal correlation is preserved, even when entanglement is not. Moreover, columns 2 and 3 also show how the total spin of the system, in all directions, remains zero. Something which would not be apparent by merely considering columns 1 and 3 alone. Notice from column 3, the definition of what, according to Bob's Y spin, constitutes up along Y, now keeps changing, because Bob's particle is now in Y superposition with respect to Bob. That is, Bob's Y spin aligns with Bob's up direction 50% of the time, and anti aligns with Bob's up direction 50% of the time. Initially, both Alice and Bob were in superposition with respect to their particle's Y components. So both of them had a non-zero chance of getting plus Y and a non-zero chance of getting minus Y. But then a Y measurement happened. That put them both in lockstep with their Y components. Then an X measurement on Bob's particle put Bob into a Y superposition with respect to his Y component. Alice now has a definite locked fixed orientation to her spin's Y component. But Bob does not. Now that he has made a measurement in the X direction, Bob himself is in superposition with respect to his particle's Y component. Whereas Alice is in an eigenstate relative to her Y component. Chirotemporal correlation thus shows why the first measurement of an entangled pair results in opposite spins along the direction of measurement, irrespective of the direction of measurement chosen, and also why non-locality does not require any action at a distance, at all, spooky or otherwise, and thus does not violate causality. It also shows why such a spin correlation does not exist subsequent to the first measurement, and how the chirotemporal correlation is maintained throughout. Thus, quantum spin entanglement is not mysterious at all. So if you still don't get it, you really need to watch the first video, Quantum Spin and Chirotemporal Correlation.